All right, you vintage fiends, welcome back to Retro Supply. Today we're covering a Retro Supply icon, Color Lab. Color Lab is Retro Supply's ultimate tool for recreating those crunchy, cheap comic print effects from the 1950s and 60s. We're going to be going through the process on Photoshop today, but the steps are essentially the same for other platforms like Procreate or Affinity. By the end of this video, you'll master the Color Lab system including the exact techniques for applying halftones, creating print defects, and achieving realistic color registration errors. So let's get into it. So first things first, setup. Don't worry, no math involved. These brushes are super easy to get into Photoshop. You just open your brushes panel, hit the little hamburger menu, and click import brushes. Grab those ABR files from the Color Lab download and import those suckers. By the way guys, my original sketch and line art was done in Procreate. Why? Because I wanted to prove how easy it is to have a cross-platform workflow, and also, I'm a simple man who loves Procreate. I sketched my drawing out with the classic pencil from the classic illustrations pack, and inked with the dry fountain brush from standard pens. After I was done, I just exported it as a PSD, airdropped it to my Mac, and now we're here. Easy peasy. Color Lab also comes packed in with a bunch of dope paper textures, the kind that will instantly make your art feel like it's printed on vintage pulp. I already threw one on my piece back in Procreate, but I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop too. Just go to File, Open, grab one of the included paper textures, and drop it above your artwork. These textures are the foundation of the whole look. They give everything that dusty, worn-in, real print feeling. Before we start slapping colors around, let's talk about how Color Lab actually works. Color Lab is built to mimic the way old school printers printed color back in the day. They used layers of ink, yellow, red, blue, and black. Each printed as tiny halftone dots. When those dots overlap, your eye blends them together into new colors. That's what the included color chart in Color Lab represents. Different combinations and dot densities for each ink color. The higher the number, the denser the pattern, meaning the dots sit closer together, and the color looks darker or more saturated. For example, B2 gives you a light blue with dots spread far apart, where B4 looks deeper because those dots are packed tight. The darkest tones of the chart usually skip the dots entirely, using just solid pure color. When you start layering two or more colors with different halftone percentages, they visually mix together to create the illusion of a completely new color, just like real comic printing. It might sound complicated at first, but don't worry. Once you see it in action, it makes perfect sense. Start with some flat default brushes and block in some loose color ideas right underneath your line art. Nothing fancy or clean, just rough swatches on temporary layers. This part's all about vibe checking, not precision. Focus on what feels right for your piece. The beauty of Color Lab is there's no single correct palette. It's about finding colors that serve your illustration and your taste. If you're stuck, grab reference from old comics or mid-century print ads. Blur the image so you stop seeing details and only see the color relationships. And then color pick from that. You'll instantly get period accurate tones that feel authentic without overthinking it. Once it feels right, lock it in and move on. Now it's time to grab the color chart that comes with Color Lab and match it to your mock-up. Take a look at the colors that you blocked in in the last step. Your skin tones, clothing, background, whatever. And compare each one to the closest match on the color chart. Don't overthink it, just eyeball what feels right. Once you've found your match, write down the code for it. For example, maybe your skin tone looks kind of sickly and green. You might land on something like YB3. Go through all your main colors this way and jot down the combinations that fit. These will be your recipes when you start painting with the halftone brushes later. Create four new layers under your line art and name them Y for yellow, R for red, B for blue, and K for black. And then set all of them to multiply. Why multiply? Because I said so. No, I'm kidding. 
because real ink doesn't just sit on top of paper. It soaks it in and overlaps. Keep your paper textures on top, your line art below that, and your four layers beneath everything else. Color Lab gives you four main halftone options. Dots rough, dots clean, lines rough, and lines clean. Dots are classic. Think vintage comics and pop art. Lines give you that early pulp or newsprint look. The rough versions mimic worn printing plates and uneven ink, so they're perfect for something that feels aged or grimy. The clean versions are sharper, more graphic, and great for bold modern retro work. Pick one overall style and stick with it. Alright, we teased this long enough. Let's get to the fun part. There's two ways to tackle Color Lab. Method 1. Color by element. Paint each object separately and apply the halftone percentages for each layer. And then move on to the next part, like clothing or background. This method lets you see the piece evolve as you go and make creative decisions on the fly. I like this one because it's more organic. You can change your mind if something looks off. Method 2. Color by layer. Do all the yellows first, and then the reds, and then the blues, and then the blacks. This is more mechanical, but it gives you tighter control if you're replicating a strict printing process. Either way, don't stress about coloring perfectly inside the lines. Slight overlaps and gaps add character. Those little imperfections, that's where the vintage charm happens. If your colors don't look right, it's no big deal. Just erase those spots from the layer you don't like and repaint them with a new halftone brush. For example, I started with this character's cloak in a loud, vibrant purple, but it kind of killed the dark mood I wanted, so I dialed it back to a softer indigo. Remember, real offset printers couldn't erase their mistakes away, but you can't, so take advantage of that while still keeping the spirit of the messy analog charm. Color Lab includes a library of print defect brushes. They're in the bonus pack you get with your purchase, along with some sweet little inkers. Create a layer mask above your halftone layers, and your line art if you want. This keeps things non-destructive, and makes sure you don't destroy your work. Grab a defect brush and set your color to pure black, and start roughening things up. Switch to white if you want to bring areas back. And here's a pro tip, ink ages differently. Yellow usually fades first, red and blue fade slower and black holds out the longest. So apply heavier wear to your yellows and lighter on your blacks. It's subtle but it makes your piece feel aged, not just distressed. Real comic inks didn't just sit neatly on top of the page, they soaked into the cheap paper. To fake that, select your color layers and add a Gaussian blur, around 1-2% and then drop each layer's opacity to about 90 or 95%. Now, to sell the illusion even more, add a little ink modeling. Create a new layer above your colors and line art, and grab one of the defect brushes, and lightly paint across the piece using black. Then set the layer to overlay, and lower the opacity to around 30 to 50%. This adds that subtle, uneven speckling you see when old paper absorbs ink inconsistently. It's the final layer of realism that ties the whole piece together. Grab the move tool and gently nudge one or more of your color layers. Maybe shift the red a few pixels left and the blue a few pixels up. That's it. Boom. Instant off-register printing. It's one of the most iconic flaws in old comics, and it gives your piece that subtle, vibrating look. Like the colors are taking a page out of my book and barely holding it together. I bet you all want to see one of those fancy time lapses where the art comes together like magic, right? Well, hold your horses, buckaroo. I gotta do the plugs first. If you dig this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to the Retro Supply YouTube channel. We've got tons of tutorials, art breakdowns, and vintage print goodness coming your way. And if you want to grab Color Lab or any of Retro Supply's other brushes, textures, or tools, head over to RetroSupply.co. It's basically like a candy store for digital illustrators who miss the smell of old ink. Alright, plug's over, let's roll the time lapse.
And that's Color Lab for Photoshop. It's your one-way ticket to turning clean digital art into gloriously filthy vintage print magic. If you want more deep dives like this, subscribe to Retro Supply's YouTube channel. We post tutorials, design breakdowns, and behind the scenes looks at the tools that keep analog art alive. And don't forget to visit RetroSupply.co. You can grab Color Lab and explore the full collection of brushes, textures, and effects that will make your work look straight off the press authentic. Now, go make something messy, weird, and beautifully imperfect. Happy creating.